Everybody, how's it going? Nice to see you all here. So, uh, yeah, today we are. Uh, my name is Mark Brownhalder, by the way. I'm the founding editor in chief of Make Magazine. This is my daughter, Jane Brownhalder. Hi. And for the past couple of years, we have been working together on this book called Maker Death. Uh, the reason I say that it's a father book is because. Uh, I have two daughters, and so I did this project with my daughters. And actually, it's really good for any child and grown up to do together. And uh, the reason that I wrote this book is because I wanted to disprove what Jerry Seinfeld once said. What Jerry Seinfeld once said is that there is no such thing as fun for the whole family. And I don't think that's true. I think there's a great, great ways for parents and kids to have fun. So I. Uh, my daughters and I worked on these projects. <coughs> Excuse me. We wanted to come up with things that were fun to play with <coughs> and fun to make. <coughs> and so we brought a few of them here. I'm going to I'm going to show them. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I have a little tickle in my throat. Thank you. Excuse me just a second. Okay, great. That's good. I think I had a hard-boiled egg earlier, and I think a bit of shell got stuck in my throat. Too much information, I know. Um, so some of the projects in the book are really simple. We brought some of them along to show you. This is a really fun one. You can see that uh, I have these four cards. They're pinned together with a thumbtack and a little piece of a dowel on the back. And uh, the cards are colored. They're uh, yellow, pink, yellow, and pink. But look what happens when I rotate the two top cards in this stack. So I just simply rotated them there. And remember, the order was uh, pink, uh, green, pink, green. Now let's take a look. And you can see that the pink stars have hopped together and the green ones are together. So uh, how do we get them back to their original order? It's simple. And there they are again, just like they started. This is a project that takes maybe three minutes to put together, but it's really fun to carry it around in your pocket. It fools everybody. It's a really fun trick. So another uh, another fun one is this little uh, gadget. And uh, what it, what we have is uh, just a little piece of wood. And it's been cut in a, in a special way so that uh, when you put it in this container, it's really hard to pick out. Jane, why don't you try to demonstrate how hard it is to get that out? So okay. what you do is you challenge your friends. How do I take this little peg out of the blue cube without uh, tipping it over. So that's a very simple way. Do you want me to demonstrate? Okay. Sure. Okay, let me see if I can do this. There you go. So that's a really fun brain teaser for your friends to do. So 
one of the uh, projects that my daughter Jane taught me is how to use polymer clay. Jane, wh why don't you talk about like what makes polymer clay cool? Um, polymer clay is really fun because you can basically make anything you want and then just cook it and then you have it basically and it's not. The, the cool thing about it, like Jane said, is that after you've molded something, it molds just like regular clay, but then you put it in a toaster oven for about 20 minutes and it becomes a hard plastic object that's permanent and doesn't mush around. So this is something that, that Jane and I made. We were really into making things that look like food. And so we used different kinds of polymer clay to make Neapolitan ice cream sandwiches and she turned it into a little necklace. And it was really fun to make and we learned how to make the thickness of the sandwich uniform and the thickness of ice cream. What you do is you stack playing cards, two little stacks of playing cards in your clay and by rolling the uh, a little piece of like a plastic dowel or something, you can get a really nice uniform thickness and then you use cookie cutters to cut out the shapes of the uh, polymer clay and then just pop it in the toaster oven. Okay, um, it's pretty quiet in here. I mean, it's, it's pretty noisy in here and this is kind of a quiet device, but uh, this is something we came up with called the Friendstrument. It takes two people to play it and I'm going to uh, hold the microphone up to it so hopefully you can hear it. I'll hold the microphone right up to okay, maybe hold Why don't you put it your finger on mine? Can you guys hear that? Could, could you turn up the gain just a little bit on the microphone for a second? The speaker is a little bit too quiet, but afterwards, if you want to come up, we can demonstrate this for you. But what it is, is it's basically an instrument that two people can play. One kid puts their finger on one penny, the other kid puts their finger on the other penny, and then you can touch each other's nose or pinch your ears, and depending on how much surface area you're contacting or how much pressure you use or how moist your skin is, you change the resistance through your, your body, and you can actually vary the pitch and volume of the signal that's going through. So we call that one the Friendstrument. This is a great one that my daughter Jane came up with. Do you remember how you came up with the idea for Mixie Sticks? Yeah, so I was trying to make a little arcade in my room because like, I have all this stuff and I didn't know what to make for a game so I took all of these um, old crayon, I mean markers that I had and I took off the caps of all of them and then put them on different markers so that the, the caps with the colors were all mixed onto the different colored sticks. And then I would give the person a minute to quickly put them back onto the correct marker. There were like 10 or 15 of them. So then it gave my dad this great idea to make things. And so we used little magnets in there. And so what the, the object is to just mix them all up like this and then as quickly as you can, and we, you can time it, take turns and use the stopwatch, see how fast you can pick them up and match the colors together so that you have them all with the right color. And, and they stick together that way. And so we got pretty good at it. So the next thing that we are working on is making a much more complex version where we have ones where the, there's four different colors painted on the different faces and they almost match but there's one off so it takes a lot longer to to match them up and make sure that you can see it starts to get trickier quicker and if you have a whole bunch of these it will take a really long time to solve it. So that's one of the Dixie sticks. This is one of my uh, favorite ones. It's hard to show you. These are called non-transitive dice. Who, have you ever have, have you heard of these before? Who's heard of non-transitive dice? Here's a, it, it's an amazing thing. They, they are not regular dice. Like this one is composed of four, four, or five, five of the faces have four dots and one of the faces just has one dot on it. This one has a six on it and then the other faces are threes. So it's one six and all threes and then this one is twos and, and I think it's three twos and three fives. So what you can do, it's, it's really cool, you, you 
give your you, t you tell your friend to pick one of the dice. And so say they pick green. You pick one of the other two dice, and then you have a contest. You say whoever beats uh, uh, you know the best out of ten is the winner. You can always pick the dice that is going to win with the law of averages. So then your friend will say, okay, well, let me use the one you used. And so you give them the one you used, and then you take the other dice and use that, and you can beat them. So no matter which dice out of the three they pick, you can always pick one that will win. And it's a lot like the rock, it's a lot like rock paper, scissors. You know, if you knew in advance what the other person was going to pick, you could always pick something that will beat them. So uh, I couldn't believe it myself when I first saw this, uh, that, that there were dice that were writing a program in, in Python and did a simulation of like 10,000 rolls for the dice. And indeed, there is always, no matter which one of these dice you pick, you can always pick another one that will beat it. So there's no champion dice here. It's, it's a pretty amazing thing. Um, what I thought I would do now is show you some of the projects in the book that were too big to bring along with us. So uh, let's take a look here. Well, there's the cards. Oh, yeah, this is a, uh, a draw bot that we made using Magic Mars and uh, a, a motor that we, just a, a cheap DC motor that you can grab out of an electric fan or a toy or something and by uh, attaching a coat hanger wire and a pom-pom at the top you get an imbalance and you set it down on a piece of paper and it will draw patterns and you can adjust the angle of the uh, the pencils on those clips so that you can come up with different patterns and it kind of bounces around so it does a little uh, kind of a pointillist drawing. There's the ice cream sandwich necklace. I just had these close-ups. There was another version of the French instrument. We did this one in a coconut shell but the first one for the book we did and a little uh, craft box. And Jane used, you can pull the battery out. Um, Jane decorated it with some Powerpuff Girls decals. This is a, a fun game from New Zealand called Mu Torere. Have you heard of this? The object of the game is to uh, move, each person gets a color, and you move your, you can move your color along. Uh, any any o to any open piece, adjacent open uh, spot, and so uh, this one you can see that red has won because yellow can't go anywhere, and the uh, the the Maori people of New Zealand invented this game, and when uh, uh, Westerners came, Maori people would play against them. The Maori people knew this game so well they could see 40 moves ahead, and so they they could beat them every single time. It's an interesting game because it seems like you're just going in these repeating patterns and it takes a really long time but eventually someone wins. Here's the little uh, a, a close up look at the uh, the peg out of the block trick. There's uh, just the analogy of rock, paper, scissors. Uh, in rock, paper, scissors no one uh, tool can can always be guaranteed to win. There's always something that can beat every other tool. This is something we have here. Uh, basically, does somebody, do, do you remember the Soma Cube from the 70s? A guy in Scandinavia invented this. It's seven different pieces. They're all different. And you can put them together into a whole bunch of different shapes. One of them is a cube shape like that. And there's a lot of different ways you can do the cube, but it's really uh, quite difficult to, uh, to, to remember how to do it. But you can also make all sorts of other shapes, too. And in the book, we show you different examples of different kinds of sh uh, shapes and animals, uh, furniture, things that you can make with these cubes. It's really a lot of fun to play with. There's the mixy sticks that you saw. There they all are solved. This is an anti-gravity jar. You can see that paper clip is suspended by a little piece of thread. And to the right is the anti-gravity powder that you add to the jar so that the paper clip floats. And uh, I'll let you figure out how this works. Um, uh, you can take a look at the book. We have some for sale on the other side. But I don't want to give away the secret right here. Here's Jane and I. We're making astronaut ice cream. Uh, 
you probably see astronaut ice cream in stores, and, and we really like it a lot. We wanted to figure out a way to make it without using the expensive vacuum process that goes into making astronaut ice cream. So we, we came up with a method to, uh, to whip up uh, kind of a, a meringue and put it in a, a uh, dehydrator or a toaster oven at a very low temperature for several hours. And you can come up with something that tastes a lot like astronaut ice cream. We have a, a, a Arduino introductory course in the book that shows you how to uh, do the uh, obligatory blinking LED, but also do things like controlling a servo motor with a potentiometer so that when you turn the, the potentiometer, you can control the angle of the servo motor. This is a photoresistor and a speaker, and you can vary the sound of the speaker by the amount of light that hits the photoresistor kind of like a, a low-cost mini theremin. This is our giant bubble project that we made. Jane wanted to see if she could put her foot inside the bubble. That's a really cool bubble. I really cranked up the HDR filter so that you could see the bubble. But you can make great bubbles. And even if there's no wind, if you just kind of walk backwards slowly, you can get these amazing shapes. It's really fun. And it's great having the... Uh, the, uh, if you have an iPhone 5S and you press the burst mode, you can, you can really capture great shots that way. This was uh, one of my favorite projects in the book. This was, um, I, I always forget the guy's name, but he, it, the art director for Harper's Bazaar magazine entered a, a plywood chair contest in 1950, and he won third place for his chair. And I always loved that kind of biomorphic shape of that chair that he made. And so I said, I've got to try making one of these myself. And so I did, and I, this is a piece of Cat 5's cable that's been, that's been woven back and forth through the holes. And the chair was really not very stable. That's maybe why he won third place. It had a, it had a tendency to like collapse. And so uh, I ended up bracing it with dowels. You can see those green things around dowels there. Uh, in a few different places throughout the chair, which takes away a little bit from the elegance that he had. I think he just had two uh, dowels in his, I, and, and the one we did ended up having three. Um, and then it also had a back brace of plywood against the back. But uh, it's an amazingly comfortable chair, and it's, it's not very hard to make. You could do it with hand tools, or if you have a, uh, a, an electric jigsaw, it's really not that hard to make. And it's a super comfortable chair. You can paint it any way you want. Um, and it, it has a great rocking motion. Paul, uh, uh, this was a, uh, a s using silicon molds to uh, mold polymer clay. And so you use silicon molding compound. That was a little trinket that we got out of a, uh, out of a gumball vending machine. There's some different trinkets. And you press it into the silicone mold. And then... Uh, just press your polymer clay into it, and you can come up with a, a really good duplicate. So you can make jewelry and things like that. Or if you have a, a cool toy that you uh, got in a gum machine and you want to give a copy to a friend, you can replicate it ad infinitum. One of the fun projects we did was a uh, kite aerial photography project. And so I made something called a... This is called a picave. It's being cropped, but what it does is those these. Uh, let me use the handy laser pointer here. Um, oh, it's not really working on the screen very well. Well, you can see how the the, the strings converge into two points there, and those go on to the kite line. So no matter how the kite line is angled, that picave, that flat platform there, is parallel to the surface of the Earth, so that if you attach your camera so it's pointing straight down, no matter how the angle of that kite line changes, it's always pointing down so you can get a nice stable image. Here's just a screenshot of uh, the camera on the beach when I was using it. So what's this? You see a piece of wood, and uh, there's a couple of heavy boxes filled with books. This is actually a skateboard that we're making. That's what it looks like. You don't really get to see the angle in them. But uh, Jane and I have really been getting into making skateboards lately. And so what you do is you just get uh, two pieces of, of plywood. And 
by putting the glue between the, the two pieces of plywood and then letting it set by putting a heavy weight on it like that and then bricks on the ends, you can get that bow and it stays in there permanently. And then you just cut the shape out with a jigsaw. I bought the uh, hardware, the trucks and the wheels for $35 on Amazon and uh, screwed them on. And uh, I think the first time I screwed them on, they were backwards, so the skateboard went to the opposite direction that I was leaning. That wasn't good. But uh, it's really pretty easy once you get the hang of it. This is a lunchbox guitar. That's one of the projects in the magazine. You get a metal lunchbox, a piece of oak wood. You use toothpicks for the frets. You just glue them on. And uh, there's all sorts of calculators online that let you figure out your fret spacing. And then you put three guitar strings on there. You tune it up using open D tuning, which is Keith Richards' favorite uh, tuning style. And you can actually play some really great music on a guitar like this. This is my uh, nephew, Sydney, playing on one that I made for her for Christmas. Uh, this is uh, Jane. Uh, Jane, you want to talk about your uh, what this is? OK, so. Um this is soap, actually, and um, we used molds that you saw in an earlier clip, I think, um, when we were making the duplicates of charms. We use that same type of mold, but then we fill it with the type of soap stuff, and we make soap. So you can make basically anything that you can fit into a silicon mold. You can buy glycerin, big chunks of glycerin soap at uh, craft stores and you just put it into a little glass bowl and put it in the microwave oven for a little bit and then pour it into your silicon mold, let it cool, pop it out. So we experimented with different colors, you can get fragrances, all sorts of things like that. And uh, uh, who, who doesn't want soap in the shape of your thumb? Here's some examples of some of the thumb soap and a little owl that we made. This is a uh, one of the projects in the book is making a retro video arcade game using the Scratch programming language, which is a kid's programming language that was developed at MIT. It's, the cool thing about Scratch is that you, to, you don't use lines of code to write the programs. You just kind of pick out pieces from a, a box on the left side of the screen, and they snap together if they make logical sense. So you kind of construct your programs by snapping these colored blocks together. It's a great way to learn programming, and it avoids uh, syntax errors, which are like really frustrating when you're first learning programming. It makes it kind of impossible to have a syntax error, which is a great uh, boon for people who are starting programming. So that is a fraction of the different projects that are available in the book. We also show you how to. Uh, do your own podcast, which is something that Jane and I do. Uh, we have a podcast called Apps for Kids. Jane has cards she can hand out after that. We are out of time, you guys. Um, there's books available on the other side uh, that have been pre-signed if you want them because we have to run. I also have a, a big stack of uh, cards with information about the book so that you can go to the website and check it out, see some of the projects get a feel for it, um, just scan the QR code there. So uh, thank you so much for, for coming, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of Maker Faire.